It's the Hail, the Hail Mary. What's that saying? Any better? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Please work. <laughs> Let's get there. Oh, it doesn't look any better, does it? This looks worrying. This looks very worrying. Oh, that looks better. That looks better. Yes, we've done it. We fixed it. We fixed it. All right, we'll post it onto the Discord. Here we go. Let's go. Let's delete that. Delete that. Okay. Uh, everyone. Everyone. Live stream working now. Working now. There you go. Okay, cool. We're in. We're, we're there. We're in. That's great news. That's great news. Okay, cool. So now we can go to. All right. I'm working. This is a night. Content. Hello, yes, we fixed it. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We can finally stream now. I've, all I had to do was restart my phone and reinstall YouTube. Um, I am new to Android phones and enjoying it a lot, but there's some weird uh, nuances that you have to get used to, and that's certainly one of them. So welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you for bearing with me if you've been trying to join me for the last half an hour or so. Um, hey, Hobolix. And uh, Prince Bolton Hawklord, welcome. All right, we can we can get going. Welcome. I don't stream very often. I just felt like doing it tonight. I don't normally like painting on stream either. Um, but we are actually making some progress on this night, and I found it's something I could paint on stream. It's a nice uh, it's a nice break from painting Space Marines, I must say. It's a very, very different experience. I've never painted a night before. The biggest things I've painted are dreadnoughts, really. So this is uh, completely new to me. And I've got to say I'm enjoying it. It's uh, completely like, I mean, I'm sure you know if you've seen my videos, but I'm very much a perfectionist when it comes to painting miniatures. But you you can't be a perfectionist when you paint these, these things. It's so big. So it's really just non oil. <laughs> I've used like most of a pot of non oil already and then it's uh i'm using uh, dry brushing with necron compound so this is actually very quick and quite fun and i thought it's something i could do on stream um so welcome how are you guys edge highlighting all of it yeah well i considered it but it's uh <laughs> we'll do some uh tidy ups but yes we are not edge highlighting this unfortunately you'll be pleased to hear Right, good, 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 good. It's all working. That's excellent. That is excellent. What are you guys uh, up to tonight? Painting? Um, so I need to finish, uh, I need to finish dry brushing the legs. I'm sort of doing it legs and then the top half needs a bit more, a bit more work. Um, which is exactly what I do with Space Marines, to be honest. And of course, all the armor panels are completely separate and untouched. So we're not really worrying about that for now. We are just going on the legs and you can see how much non oil I've used. Uh, just like wiping it off the model. <laughs> so when, when it pulls on the night, so like it would pull in here, for example, uh, you have to pull it away with a brush and I've just wiped it on here to then keep going because I really didn't want pooling and it's it's actually quite hard to get the the paint to not pool when you're putting so much on and you really have to I mean you use so much non oil on these things it's like a sponge for your non oil I wouldn't start a, a night without a full pot of it to be honest 
How much does it cost? Uh, I think it's around £100 uh, in the UK. I think I would have got it cheaper through Element Games. Um, maybe 90 or so. But it's uh, it's big. I mean, if you've never seen a knight, let me get it. Let me grab a marine. Oh, that's one on my desk, actually. Here we go. This is, uh, this is how big a... I can't even get it on camera, to be honest. But the, these assault intercessors, these jump assault intercessors are actually quite big. And they don't even go up to the knee, so... The knights are really quite large. I'd say it's a good kit. It took me a long time to build. I built it over Christmas. And only this week have I sort of got the, the urge to start painting it. And I also picked up one of these makeup brushes. In fact, I've picked up a whole set of them. And these makeup, makeup brushes are something that I've been um, considering for a while. I'm currently using this one, it's a bit smaller. I, mean, I heard people talking about them and saying that they're a good a good thing to use to speed up your painting, especially your dry brushing, but I've never, never bit the bullet until today. I, I felt like I didn't really have the, the right brush to, to do this and I thought, why not? You know, why not actually give the makeup brushes a crack? And uh, I've, it's working out all right, to be fair. This is a this is a leg which has had had a good old dry brush with the makeup brush. Um, need a few bits tidying up, a bit bit more uh, sort of attention to detail here and there. But but broadly, this is um, this is a pretty good finish. I'm pretty happy with this. It really hasn't taken that long. Uh, the Warhammer in Russia? No idea. No idea. I would guess there probably is. No painting tonight. Need to get back to some painting soon. Been trying to work out my DW Deathwing. Okay, so makeup brush. Most of this has to come off. I found almost all of it's got to come off. There we go. And once it's all off, you can uh, get stuck into the model. Let's just work out which side I've <laughs> got to do. I think that side's done. Yeah, it's this side we've got to. So I use the base a lot when I'm painting to just take paint off, really. Um, just, it's just convenient. It's just there, isn't it? And uh, and then let's just work it in. It's very light. It's sort of, uh, it's almost like you've, you've got you've got no paint on it at all, really, and, and you're almost pushing quite hard. And that's it's a nice model to do that because there's no bits that are going to snap off here. This is a pretty robust kit, I must say. Quite, an, quite impressively so. And uh, just try not to go. You're only going to get too much if you if you have too much paint on the brush. But other than that, you can really just work it. And even if I get a little bit too much, I think I'm going to go back in with the washes in a slightly more targeted way at some point. So for now, this is working pretty well, I think. How's the audio, by the way? Can you hear me OK? I, I, I'm not I'm not using my microphone. I'm just going through the phone, so it should be all right, but it's probably not as good as it normally is. Okay, there we go. So we'll get, yeah, I see it's slightly too much in there, but the light looks better. Well, I'm glad, yeah. It was, uh, I don't know what was going on with the camera earlier, but it just didn't want to, didn't want to uh, bother with pixels. Sound decent enough. Well, that's good. you've uh, stuck with the channel for a while, you'll realize my, I've been on quite a journey with my audio. Uh, I got accused of being an ASMR channel for a while because I had a microphone that was a bit oversensitive, I think. And uh, I, I bought a pop filter recently and that's really been a game changer for me. But today we'll just go through the phone, I think. Okay. It's hard to get underneath uh, on camera to do these bits, but the nice thing about dry brushing is I'm very happy to dry brush on stream because you you don't need to be precise for doing this really. You just need to get coverage. Hmm. But yeah, I've always wanted a knight. These kits are 10 years old now, I think. And uh, I just never never bought one. And this year for Christmas, I thought, oh, well, I've got enough space for me in 7 I don't know, get something um, something a bit different. And whenever I buy something that's that's not a space marine now, I, I really only, I really think, okay, well, I'm only going to buy something if I can genuinely paint this quite fast. And I, fingers crossed, I can paint this fast because 
I'm happy to try these methods. I honestly think <laughs> I could end up spending less time on this than like a one Space Marine character, which would be interesting, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's good to try different things, I think. There we go. Anyway, interestingly, and I'm sure you've noticed this if you follow my channel, but my painting content <laughs> does not do well <laughs> on YouTube. The, the Rhino Whirlwind, uh, that one isn't too ASMR. It's, it's when I, 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 got a, I got a new microphone maybe a year ago or a bit less. And some of those videos from maybe six to 12 months ago are very ASMR. <laughs> Sounds like I'm incredibly close to the microphone and um, there's loads of comments saying, oh, you sound like you're eating your microphone or you're spitting on it. And um, some people actually liked it. That's the weird thing. Some people actually quite enjoyed it. They said, oh, you should do a ASMR content. You have a, you have a, I get a lot of comments about my voice on my channel. Usually they're positive. And, uh, but, but a lot of it's not, not pleasant on the uh, earlier videos with the new microphone. And I think nowadays there's much better but that's mainly because of this pop filter I bought. I can even show you my microphone if you're interested. Yeah, Andonius, you've watched a lot of my videos. You've been a you've been a fan for a long time, so thank you. It's good. Uh, it's good to see loyal fans. It's really nice. I mean, you probably subscribed when I had I don't know less than five hundred subscribers, which is quite a while ago now. Just check the focus here. There we go. We're focusing all right. There we go. Yeah. Certain charm to it. Yeah, I think I am a bit different to a lot of um, Warhammer YouTubers. Certainly more amateur, but I think maybe that's what people like. Don't really do production uh, value. There we go. Okay, coming coming along, coming along. I'm, I'm broadly following Dun Duncan Rhodes' uh, night painting video which was on the Warhammer official channel, um, which was made, I think, yeah, like nine years ago or something. It's actually still pretty good, I've got to say. It's uh, it's basically just lead belcher, a pot of normal oil, and then dry brush the silver. And I think that's the smartest way to do this still. Um, I couldn't think of a better way. So I'm doing that. And, you know, I think once you get most of this done, you can paint a few of the details, different colors, and get a few, I don't know, different colored washes on there or something. And I think you'll have a pretty, pretty good night. And actually, anyway, with a night, it's not the, it's not the metallics that make it. It's the, it's the panels, the armor panels. And I haven't quite worked out what color I want to paint it. I was thinking of doing it somewhat red because I'm obviously my blood angels, but I don't want it to just look like the same as that. I want it to look a bit different. Um, so any ideas, let me know. Found a few uh, interesting sort of custom houses, but then a lot of the custom houses on online that people have sort of come up with, there's no transfers for them. So I kind of probably have to stick with something where I can use the, the transfer sheet that came in this set. Swag D's. Thank you for your comment, that's very nice. Yeah, I get that comment. Um, or variations on it uh, every now and again. It's very nice to read. Um, it's what we're going for, I think. I was uh, I was certainly looking for for a bit of a niche with my channel, and I think that seems to be seems to be it. But a lot, uh, lots of channels like this. But um, yeah, it, it, interesting. I, I want to I want to stream more because I think I think my style does lend itself to streaming because it, it's very conversational and. Um, Almost all my videos I, I do in one take. And I feel like uh, I could stream if I'm going to do that and actually speak to people. But um, I just don't really have the setup, to be honest. This is <laughs> this is as good as it's, it's got so far. The camera's there. This camera's decent quality. Um, but yeah, no, thank you, Swag Dees. It's very kind of you. I, I agree that a lot of YouTube channels are, are almost unwatchable with how... Um, you know, kind of fast paced some of their videos are and how uh, kind of over edited they are. And um, it's not, it's not really compatible with Warhammer, is it? Like 
most people just sit down to relax and, and to, to chill and um, like what's what I do anyway most of the time and <laughs> you kind of want something that's a little bit more low-key than uh, the kind of over-edited uh, you know ADHD sort of videos like the TikToks of the world but maybe there's a niche for it. France you can make your own decals I could make my own decals but anyway. I actually bought some decals from um, uh, a third party. I think it was, it wasn't Top Goes the Monkey. I think it was another well-known one. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull them out in a sec. But for the for the Cruel Blades, I bought some some decals. Um, is the resolution going? Or are you being sarcastic? Or is it just, the focus is a bit in and out. That's the thing. You have to be careful with the focus, but it is a good, it is a good camera otherwise. Um, let's find these decals, one sec. The nice thing about using this dry brush is you don't need to wash it, you just leave it. So little paint on it, it doesn't matter. The decals were from, here they are. The Mighty Brush. There we go, that's where I got my decals from. And I got, uh, some blades. And some, some red, uh, blood drops. And that's how we do the cruel blades. Shoulders. Blades on first, and then the, the blood drop over the top. And they're pretty good. They're pretty good. So yes, custom decals are always an option. Um, but for a night, oh, I don't know. I'm sure there are some very good ones out there, but I'm not really into designing my own, to be honest. I think by that point, it's uh, you've got to be very into it. I don't have an idea in mind, really. But the night, the night decal sheet from the kit is very nice, I'd say. There's a lot on here. There's a lot on here. So I know a few of these are for particular houses. But I think, I still think you could do almost any, here we go, look, here, these are the houses here, look. Terran, Hawk Shroud, and uh, Tyrannis, there we go, this is the one that Duncan was painting, I think. I mean, these are the, sort of the standard ones, but you could do a lot with it, with this, I think. So I'll, I'll use this and just need to work out what sort of colours I'm going to do. Um, there we go. Ever thought about getting into heresy. I have some, uh, I have some heresy models, but they're, I've never really, I basically bought Age of Darkness and I painted, I'll show you what I painted. I have a cabinet here. Painted some heresy blood angels. Mark six sort of ones. Here we go. Here's some of my heresy models. See that? Maybe do one at a time, it's a bit easy. Get that to focus. Come on. There we go. We're, we're, we're in business. So I have some heresy models. Um, but this Age of Darkness set came with, what, 40 of these tactical marines? Painted some of uh, Summer's Imperial Fist. Actually, the, the icon of my channel is an Imperial Fist uh, heresy model. And uh, it's interesting because I don't really paint Imperial Fists. I have had that question before. Why is your uh, why is your channel picture an imperial fist when you don't really collect them? It's a good question. I know. Put those away. Back in the case. Heresy. I've done some other heresy models somewhere. Oh, I can't find them for now. But yeah, it, the, the profile picture is just an imperial fist that I painted. That's all it is. Um, it's the, it's the picture I added when I first made the channel and had zero subscribers and I haven't changed it since. And I think I've just sort of stuck with it now, which is fine. I have thought about maybe uh, proud of the yellow paint. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not an amazing paint job. It's just, it's just a, an Imperial Fist. I do like Imperial Fists. I just don't think I could paint uh, a lot of them. It'd drive me a bit mad painting all that yellow. That there are, you know, there are smart ways to paint yellow, but I'm, I'm not a smart painter, so oh, hello, I'm going to stay on the screen. I think we're pretty much there with these legs for the sort of first dry brush. What we're going to have to do is go back onto the wash on the top. Um, yeah, I'm pretty pretty happy with with those. All right, there we go. I'd say those legs are sort of phase one, I'd say it's done. We've had uh, null oil twice over lead belcher and then we've got necron compound. 
So I'd say like, you know, it's looking okay. But there are certain parts where we need more definition, you know, like I've gone a little heavy on the dry brushing or maybe um, the non-oil didn't quite go where I wanted it to go. So we're going to go back in at some point with more targeted shading um, through sort of maybe washes or maybe just a little bit, little tiny bit of panel lining, but it shouldn't be very much work. It will just be, you know, just a couple of obvious areas. I mean, I can see here, look, this is, this is annoying me, right? Just get a little bit of shading under there and then it'll be, it'll be good. And then of course we have to paint some of these details like this, um, these cables, uh, you know, they need to be black or whatever, yellow and um, get some oil on there or whatever. So that will be the plan. But first we have to get the top half. Let's see if I can just come back a bit here because I'm going to have to do the top half of him. There we go. Now we've got, do I wash this makeup brush? Maybe. There we go. We've got to add another layer of non-oil onto this bit. Um, see, we've got a little bit of tide marks here, but we've got to get some more non-oil in there and under there. And the hardest thing is not putting the non-oil on, it's it's getting it all off when it starts pooling. It gets, uh, you can come back to this thing after half an hour and it's just pulled somewhere and you have to really get it all off. But uh, the second coat was a bit easier than the first one. So the first one's done now. Now, I am running low on this pot of non-oil. I've used almost all of it. Um, tip for non-oil that I saw on the internet is you can blue tack the blue tack on the base and just stick it in and there you go. You ain't knocking it over. You ain't knocking it over. Which is actually a very smart tip. The Heresy Blood Angels look great. Well, thank you. It's very kind, Tom. I just don't paint very many of them. <laughs> That's my problem. I'm, I'm happy with how my models look in general. I just don't paint very many of them. Um, here we go. Right. There we've got this horrible old brush. I think this is an old Citadel. What's this? Oh, it's actually a shade brush. Look at that. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Medium shade brush. And uh, we're going to use that to put some more non oil on onto the top. It's hard to get enough height on my camera here, to be honest. Maybe I want to go all the way up. Yeah, that might be the way to do it, actually. Go up there. There we go. And I can just. It's a good thing I've got this blue tack on the bottom of the non oil because that would definitely go while I'm trying to get my camera in the right place. There we go. <clears throat> Have you tried any alternative paint or hobby product ranges to GW? Yeah, I have. So I use I use the Army Painter brushes quite a lot these days. I actually prefer them. So, for example, the this one is the what's that? Detail brush from the Army Painter. Hard to get my camera to focus sometimes. Um, I like these brushes. They're a bit cheaper and they have a nice sort of, oh, sorry, it's just not focusing, is it? They have a nice um, sort of triangular shape, which is quite nice. There we go. I find these are quite, quite good brushes. Um, I'm currently using a makeup brush as well, uh, although that's just from um, Superdrug, if you're in the UK. I have used uh, Vallejo for matte varnish, which is pretty good because Games Workshop don't do a brush on varnish. And I've also used um, Micro Solemn Micro Set for transfers, which I do recommend. I think there are other ones that do the same sort of thing, but, but beyond that, I do tend to use Games Workshop colors for painting. Uh, mainly, mainly just because uh, it's easy to, to colour match and I never had an issue with them. I know some people really don't like some of the Games Workshop paints, but I, I find them absolutely fine. They do sometimes dry out um, and you have to repurchase them, but um, I don't spend that much money on paint because I don't paint enough. You know, if, if I was getting through you know, dozens of models a week, I'd probably use a lot of paint, but, but I'm so slow that I find my biggest issue is actually the paint drying out because the pot's open for so long. <laughs> <laughs> while I'm painting something really slowly rather than uh, me actually, you know, just getting getting through it. But 
Uh, is there much of a difference in the brush types? I don't think so. I think it's just preference. I just found the Army Painter ones were a good deal. I got I got sort of three or four of them for not too much money. Element Games have a lot of Army Painter stuff. And I found they were actually just a little bit um, better quality for me. I just I just like them. It, but I, I really think it's just complete preference. Everyone paints a bit differently. Um, I wouldn't. I I wouldn't actually recommend a certain type of brush to someone. I just say try try slightly different ones until you find some find one that you like. Games Workshop brushes are fine. Um, they are fine. Right. Let's get. What's that? Okay. There we go. We'll go like that. We'll go like that. All right. Open up the non oil. Make sure it's down. I think I, I'm going to run out, to be honest, but we'll, uh, we'll go. All right, let's get it on. I might just, do it just there. there we go. Right, non oil, round two. Oh dear, this is going to be quite difficult to do on camera. Yes. I think for the second coat of non oil, I'd say the secret is to just use less. Um, this is slightly more targeted, and we really don't want pooling now, I think, because we've sort of got some slightly you know, dodgy tide marks from the first round with the pooling, and I think almost the point of this coat is to actually sort of smooth that out and just darken it all down a bit. And then on the uh, on the sort of dry brush wool, we'll hopefully again sort of buff, buff that out. Um, we just want to make sure we're well well shaded really here. It's kind of the goal with this. So back to the pot. I might move the pot actually up there. It's a bit easier to just access that. There we go. Okay. So really just trying to get into these bits here without pooling too much. There we go. Mm. So yeah, as I said, um, I really do want to do more hobby content on my channel, painting, this sort of stuff, but um, it doesn't get views. <laughs> it's very easy to make a video in about five minutes, which just is vaguely critical of Games Workshop or maybe um, talks, uh, you know, about a sort of hot topic in the community or reacts to some news. It's essentially, I'm a, I'm a reaction channel, right? Um, and those things pull in views. They get so many views. It's so, well, I'm just trying to get the camera focused here. Those things get millions of views. Well, not millions. I wish I got millions. Um, but but those things get clicks, and it's uh, it's the content that I put a bit more time in, like this sort of stuff, right? The painting content, which is basically what I want to do, um, which I really struggle to get the get the views on, which is maybe not surprising. I think people find talking about Games Workshop stuff very relatable because everyone's vaguely invested in that, and that's sort of the niche I've stumbled upon, um, which is fine and. Interestingly, I'm relatively pro Games Workshop um, in a sort of outspoken way, which I think is also um, maybe unusual. But um, I would really like to do more hobby stuff. And uh, it's just difficult. You know, it's a, it's a, there's a lot of people out there doing this and there's a lot of people who are very good at it. And even just making... Um, this sort of video is hard. <laughs> like I can't really paint on camera. I wish I could. It always amazes me how people manage to paint so well on camera. Um, yeah, it's not. It's not easy. It's really not easy. Okay. maybe painting the night was a mistake. I mean, <laughs> yes, I can paint it on camera, but I can't, it's so big, I can't get it to focus on, uh, I can't get it to focus on uh, 
the bits I wanted to focus on. There we go. It's just about working, isn't it? So I'd say this is weird. It's, I'm, I'm almost dry brushing the wash on now. It's kind of, I don't know. Just got to get it on, haven't you? It's very uh, imprecise science. Yeah, painting a model this big is just this is the opposite experience to painting a minute, uh, you know, a space marine or a single character miniature. It's, um, couldn't be more different, to be honest. You do a good job of explaining what Games Workshop does from a business perspective. Yeah, a lot of my videos are inspired by essentially like the classic nerd rage arguments that um, to me often come across as like, I don't know, na naive, is that the right word? Um, like may maybe they just haven't really thought through what they're sort of, I don't know. I'm not saying I'm always right. I'm just, I'm just saying um, a, a lot of people act like Games Workshop. Um, you know, owe them everything. And um, they sort of really want, you know, they want their cake, they want to eat it. And uh, I, I I never like that. Uh, and I, I don't think Games Workshop are the best company in the world, but by a long way. Um, I just try and basically say what I think. And a lot of the time, when I see a community outraged over something, which in my opinion is never really a particularly big deal, um, it often inspires me to make a video. Um, just trying to be a little bit more rational. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much, uh, but I mean, everyone has a different perspective on, on this hobby. I mean, I, I've come in quite recently. So, so, I mean, I, I've actually been, uh, a Warhammer fan for most of my life, but, um, I've only been doing 40 K regularly for the last four years or so. So before that, I took a very long break, um, when I was studying and, you know, just a young adult and you, it's far, much harder to find the time for 40k. So uh, it's the sort of thing I did loads as a child and now I've come back to a lot, a lot more in the last few years. And I think a lot of people have a very different relationship with Warhammer than that. They've been, they're, they're usually older than me. I'm, I'm relatively young for a, for a sort of online Warhammer fan. And they have a certain sort of nostalgic relationship with Warhammer that goes back uh, to a completely different era and has covered m many more eras than, than, than what I've experienced. And that perspective is different. And I think people have different feelings, um, and, you know, about Warhammer and the game and, uh, Games Workshop through that lens. And I, I, I'm definitely aware as well, the Games Workshop were particularly bad, I think in the mid 2010s, early 2010s, I think they were very bad as a company. They made some poor decisions and really alienated um, some of their customers. And I didn't, I wasn't really engaged with the hobby then. And I also came into the hobby a little bit after Primaris came out. And I think a lot of people really didn't like the shift to Primaris and never really got over it. Whereas I've always quite liked the Primaris models, to be honest. So, um, it, it's it's a completely different um, perspective that, that that a lot of people have, and as I said, I think a lot of people have more time in in it than than I do. They sort of have more skin in the game, and uh, maybe uh, my viewers sort of reflect that a bit. Um, but I could be wrong. Um, hobby videos are tough to watch. Uh, yeah, I, I I kind of agree. I actually don't watch that many myself, which is a shame. Um, they're hard to do. Uh, I found it a bit odd how negative most hobby Warhammer channels are about Games Workshop and they also create the thing they love. They're far from perfect, but we wouldn't have Warhammer without them. Yeah, I think exactly the same. And the example I always use is, is when I played World of Warcraft. I always use the example, but I think it's a good one. Um, there are some people who played World of Warcraft for 20 hours a day. <laughs> Maybe not quite 20, but 12, 15 hours a day. And they would spend half their time online complaining about Blizzard and how bad they make the game. And if you just think about that for five seconds, you realize that this person is not making good life decision, right? They, if they hate the game, but spend all their time in it, like that's on them. And what I don't understand is people who are so heavily invested in Warhammer, but spend all their time complaining about it. Because in my life, if I don't like something, I just don't do it. And I spend my time doing something else. <laughs>
So it it makes it puzzles me how there's so much like negative content um about uh, about this uh, online and it's of course negativity gets clicks and I've experienced that through my own channel but you um it just doesn't align with what why I like you know what what I what I do and why I like doing it it's it just it just doesn't I can't relate to it to be honest I don't spend my time like thinking Games Workshop are an awful company I spend my time thinking oh, I actually quite like these products and um I, I you know this is great <laughs> so uh i try and make content which um you know reflects that but but you know also i think there's there's very interesting debates to be had in this um in this space and i try and uh you know try and be fair i, I you know just say what i think really um i find your videos quite refreshing for the internet nerd rage well that's it isn't it it's it is internet nerd rage. And I, and I, I think what the internet nerds get, get wrong is that, um, you know, which is probably what the, the people who aren't sort of those typical nerds do is that they just move on. You know, if I fell out of love with Warhammer for whatever reason, I'd probably just move on with my life and do, do something else and spend my time on something else. But the, some of the nerds that, that don't really let it go. Um, I work in corporate finance um, and what they do makes sense. My plastic toy soldiers Playing self doesn't like it. The thing is to disconnect make your hobby mind and common sense mind. I do like nerd rage. Um, it's how I work through things and come to grips. Love. Well, that's fair enough. But Andonius, you're very you're very um, reasonable uh, nerd rager. You actually formulate uh, you know valid and uh, cogent arguments uh, and always leave sort of thought provoking comments. But um, plenty of uh, nerd ragers don't don't do that. <laughs> so there's a there's a spectrum here, right? Like we don't always agree on things, but we're, it's uh, that's fine, you know, that's that's normal. But there's some people who are just, you know, they're just so blinkered by hatred, and they really, uh, they just, they just say mean things. <laughs> I do wonder why they they're watching a Warhammer video if they have those some those sort of uh, thoughts and feelings sometimes. Um, I bought a nonsensical amount of plastic at the beginning of my hobby. Yeah. Hello, I hope you have a great day. I have 2,000 points of Astartes and I am 12. Well, I'm glad to hear that. The majority are painted. Um, that's awesome. I think when I was probably about 12, I also had um, probably around 2,000 points of Astartes. That was about the age I uh, got into Space Marines. Before that, I was doing Lord of the Rings and Fantasy Battles. And then finally, 40k came for me. Finally. And... Uh, since then, I've uh, I actually had Chaos Space Marines first. I will probably do a video one day of um, of uh, my Chaos Army from back in the day because I have it. I still have it. It's kind of um, crazy, isn't it? I've never showed it on the channel, but um, and some of the models aren't even painted. I could probably paint paint some of them one day. <laughs> It's weird, isn't it, painting uh, Warhammer models from 20 years ago? Well, not quite 20 years ago, but uh, they don't, they don't, um, they don't really perish or age. If you have an unpainted plastic mini from 20 years ago, it's it's just as good as new, really. Um, when it comes to you know starting to paint it, which is nice. Did you ever finish painting those black Templars? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't really do finishing stuff, unfortunately. Um, I'm very bad at starting projects and finishing and not finishing them. I do intend to finish the Templars. Hey, let me get the Templars out, actually. The Templars haven't been on the channel for a long time. And I want to show you where they're at. I do have quite a few of them. So, black Templars. Let's go into the cabinet. Right. Let's go a bit. Let's get it down here. There we go. That's good. Okay, so that's the Chapman who is finished. And I also have a couple of Crusaders who are finished. Right. That's the extent of the Black Templars who are finished. And then I have a whole squad that I was batch painting. In fact, a squad and characters that I was batch painting. Wait for it. Here we go. I was doing this squad here, and oh dear, sorry, this is not good viewing. This is this is the problem you see. I don't have a good setup for this. 
There we go. And then look, I just got to the point where I'd done a lot of the base coats for pretty much the whole unit. And it just, it just sort of died out. You know, I just sort of stopped. And this was probably, I don't know, over a year ago now. And other projects became more interesting to me. So I did that, those. And that's the state the Templars are in. And it's a shame. I'd like to finish them. It's just, uh, it's just stuff, <laughs> stuff becomes more attractive to, to want to paint. And uh, there we go. We can actually see them up close. Painting black is interesting. It, it's it's sort of fun, but it's it's not relaxing in the slightest. It does take a long time. You've got to basically edge highlight the whole model twice. So it takes a very long time to do black power armor the way I want to do it, which is like this. So the rest of the model is quick. Black power armor, very, very slow. This one's nice, I like this model. It's a bit shiny in this light, but anyway. Back to the night, I think. Let me put these back in the cupboard. Um, Cy Runners, watch me paint my night while procrastinating painting your own night. <laughs> yeah, well, procrastinating is uh, certainly a large part of Warhammer. I often spend a, a I think one of the reasons I, I struggle to finish stuff is that the, the longer I paint a model, the more I procrastinate, the more I just look at it 70% finished. I find it harder and harder to put paint on. It becomes more visually interesting. So I just... Uh, I just sort of stop painting it, which is kind of a weird thing. But anyway, let's put all these away for now. One day I will get through these Templars. Um, but I mean, given how long it takes to do one guy in black doing a squad of 10, 15, whatever, we're talking a lot of time needed for that. And it's time I'm not going to spend on them at the moment, unfortunately. But maybe one day we'll come back to them. All right, back to the night. Look at this, much easier than <laughs> edge highlighting black. Just dry brushing silver. I want to have a night, yeah. Well, I recommend it. It's a good kit, um, but it's hard. It took a while to build. Do you have an airbrush? No, I do not have an airbrush, and I... I've toyed with the idea of getting an airbrush, and I think actually an airbrush would be very good for doing these sort of armor panels um, on the night. I'm going to have to hand paint these, I think. But no, I don't have an airbrush for now. Um, maybe one day I'll get an airbrush. I think I was told with the idea of getting an airbrush and a 3D printer, and it's never really happened yet. And 3D printer, I like the idea of it, but I also have so many unpainted models that buying a 3D printer that will give me more unpainted models is not really on the agenda at the moment. Uh, an airbrush, um, I, I've thought about it quite hard. May maybe, maybe. For now, no, I, I'm happy with the brush. Thanks for showing them off, no problem. Cannon shots. I stripped the paint off some Necron warriors and then I literally lost them. There's just a bag of skeletons somewhere in my house. Yes, well, it is easy to lose Warhammer models. Uh, before this dries, I need to um, get some of the pulled. So this is what happens when you slap on the Nuln oil. Let's get this in focus. Where's the... There we go. It pulls and you have to get it off there because you don't. I don't really want it pulling like that. So this is, and then use the base and just dump the, dump the bit that I don't want. And this is pretty much what I spent the last day doing. <laughs> it's not that fun, but at least you don't have to be very neat, which is why I can do this on stream. Spencer, hey, how you doing? You have any thoughts on why you chose the armies you do, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, Black Templars and Knights? What appeals? To be honest, uh, it's, I'm just a Space Marine fan. Um, I, I, I've impulse bought the Primaris stuff, and it's it's definitely 
um, the Primaris chapter specific stuff. I think they're some of the best uh, space screen models really that Games Workshop have done. So particularly the Dark Angels and the, and the Black Templars. Um, I'd much rather buy that, those kits than buy, say, you know, the standard pri Primaris kits, um, which is why I've ended up with those armies. I, I never really intended on having armies of either of them. I just, I just like the kits, to be honest. Um, and the Blood Angels, I do want an army for. I kind of have. I have an army, I guess. I have maybe, I have at least a thousand points painted. So I could, I could play games with that uh, one day. And I probably will. Um, there we go. Why Blood Angels? I don't know. I just like the colour, I think. I think red Space Marines look very good. Um, do I play games or just mainly paint? I mainly paint. I used to play games. I used to play um, a lot with my friend when I was when I was younger. I used to play Fantasy Battles when that was still a live game system. And we played 40k. Um, I had an Orc army played Fantasy Battles. And in 40k I, I had a Chaos army and then I think I did have some Space Marines as well. And uh, I used to play a lot. I used to go to Games Workshop. I used to play there in my local store. I had a table. I used to go to my friend's house who also had a table. We were very into it. Recently, I haven't played much, no. I've not played any 10th edition. So maybe one day we'll get playing. Um, Spencer's done the exact same armies. Well, I think this is the reason people have done the same armies, because the, the kits are so good for, for those armies. The, the chapter specific stuff, they're, they're supported in the Primaris era. I mean, if the Games Workshop had done Imperial Fist, uh, you know, interesting Imperial Fist models, or maybe, um, you yeah, like, say, maybe Space Wolves, uh, I'd have probably brought some of those kits, but they, they haven't really. Um, so I've just I've sort of followed the... I'm basically doing being a, being a good boy and doing what Games Workshop want me to do, right? <laughs> Classic. Uh, an airbrush isn't expensive and lots of fun. Yeah, I, I probably shouldn't use an airbrush, but whatever. It's, uh, you get so used to just doing something a certain way. It's, I don't know, like, I, I, I get I get how airbrush an airbrush is a very good tool, but also the idea of sort of putting a mask on and firing up my compressor and having to ventilate the room is, is a little bit... It's sort of like anti-hobby, right? <laughs> I sort of just do this to something I can just sit at the desk and, and relax and do. Whereas, like, you know dialing up my 3D printer and putting on my mask and firing up my airbrushes. It's all a little bit hardcore for, for what I want to get out of um, Warhammer, which is basically just chilling. Right? So if I was a, you know, if I was a competitive uh, painter or professional painter, I'd 100% get an airbrush. But for now, I'm, I'm just stuck on the old tools because that's what I'm, that's what I'm used to, I guess. You're right. I should get an airbrush. It would, it's a good skill to, to, to have, I think, and uh, yes, it would probably save me time and I'd get more done. Um, Charmaine doesn't have one? Yeah, a lot of people don't have one. 3D printing sounds like a whole extra hobby. It appeals to me, but I don't have the time. Yeah, exactly. Do you have a Jokero? I don't know what that is. What is that? Jokero, Jim. Did you ever finish the Terminator Captain from Leviathan? <laughs> uh... <laughs> The Terminator Captain from Leviathan is like, is, ugh, that model, man. Uh, uh, no is the answer. I mean, it, it's so close to being finished. It, it, I could, I could, oh, oh dear, something just fell over. Here's the Terminator Captain from Leviathan. He is all but finished. He needs the base room doing. He needs this arm doing, that bit there. That needs doing. And I think a couple of these um, like scroll things, purity seal, paper bits. And maybe the cape needs highlighting. So yes, uh, the Terminator Captain from Leviathan is, is very close to finished. And yes, he looks very good. He's one of those models that I put so long into and then just completely burnt out <laughs> painting. And I just can't finish him. I, I probably could finish him now. Um, uh, maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll set aside a weekend and, and do it, but it's, it's, it's one of those ones that sat there for so long. Um, 
and and also all the bits I have left to do are so boring as well. I mean, look at the the, the fun the fun bits are, are done. The, the interesting bits are done. He looks done from certainly that angle, pretty much. Um, but no, <laughs> he's not finished. And I do this a lot. It's typical, unfortunately. I wish I uh, I wish I didn't do this, but um, one day. Here we go. Can I focus? There we go. One day, he'll get done. One day. Uh, but Leviathan, I sort of see as like an ongoing project. So it's not so much about finishing him; it's about finishing the whole box. And um, I've got a lot of uh, a lot of those models of stuff and sort of on the go. But uh, one of the many projects which will linger on for a while okay let's just see if we've got any pooling going on here not too much okay joker row or species in 40k they only had two models made well i've never heard of them i'll look into them um that looks sick thank you very much it is one of my better models it's just uh it's just not finished It's why uh it's why my if you saw my video recently of the space marine in a well two day challenge um that's such a big deal for me because i think i was working on that terminator captain for um, well over a month I was painting it almost every day and i i really burnt out on it and and i probably couldn't i could now pick it up again and paint it but I, it just hasn't happened um as i said there's often there's always something a bit more interesting that i want to work on They are orangutans with rings that shoot lasers. Okay, well, I'll look into them. Do you guys think the melter cannon shoots a beam, as shown in Broken Lance, or a bolt? Well, I can't answer that with melter. You can have a debate about that in the comments. Do you follow any tutorials or watch any hobby channels, or do you just mainly do your own thing? Um, yeah, I do follow some tutorials. I really like Duncan Rhodes. I think his painting style is very similar to mine. It's that classic, like classic way to paint i guess and i find it useful following some of his videos because it just takes the decision making process out of painting which i think is often what slows you down if you're following someone else's guide of you know the kind of order they painted things i find uh the, the experience is um you know it's a lot more autopilot which um just get a model done sort of pick up you know, techniques here and there from various uh, videos I see, but broadly, I generally just do my own thing. And I have a style now that's, I have a way of painting things, which is pretty, pretty well sort of developed, I think, for most things. But what I, I'm doing this, uh, this model I'm doing in a new way. I mean, I've never painted a model this size before. So I have, I have, you know, gone online for inspiration of how people do it. And it's not particularly sophisticated, but it is, um, it is a, you know, still a new thing that I wanted to see before I did it myself. Um, what's your opinion on Firstborn Space Marines? I definitely have some videos about that. I like Firstborn Space Marines um, a lot. I just don't like the scale of some of the old models. So I won't really buy um, the small skinny leg Marines, but I do like Firstborn Space Marines, for sure. And I hope Games Workshop one day release more Firstborn um, models. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. There's too much of a market there for, of people who really like them um, for them not to release Firstborn, I think. I think they have to. Warhammer over wife. Good evening, Project. Good evening, Warhammer over wife. When are we getting a face reveal? Um, not today. <laughs> I think the Melter shoots a beam. There we go. Do you ever get dismayed by the thought that 40k is sort of pointless? Sometimes I let it really bother me. The hobby being something that has no obvious intrinsic value and big expense. Yeah, but um, I, I, I get I get that. I think I think doing the YouTube channel has been good for me for, from that perspective. Like, of um, it adds more purpose to the hobby. 
and I think you have to have a reason you do it. And, and for me, initially, I, I just like projects. I like doing projects, even though I'm not very good at finishing them. Having a project to fund is a really good thing. And the project has become, uh, rather than sort of painting lots of models, the project is now um, also my, my YouTube channel. So that's kind of why I do it. Um, but if you know, ultimately, it's it's a good way to spend time. If you, uh, I get pleasure and enjoyment out of spending my time doing this. So that's as good a reason as any to do it. I think the world pushes you in a direction towards one. Like, there's only something's only worth your time if you're getting something back from it. Usually, money. Um, and I kind of like that Warhammer isn't that, in a way. It's a way to actually turn your brain off and say, I don't need to be getting. Uh, something back from this um, it's enough as what it is and it's but I don't know everyone has a different reason they do it um, but yeah I mean everything's pointless from a, from that sense right pretty much everything's pointless right there's a point of doing anything um, it can be expensive it can be expensive uh, but it also holds its value I mean you I, I've overbought models and um, I've sold on models uh, that, I, that I was never going to paint on eBay I don't lose that much um, from them as long as they're sort of in decent condition you can sell on for not far off um, you know discount retail uh, as long as you've kept them in good nick so it's not like a waste of money um, if you don't want it anymore did you get the new croup box set no I didn't um, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna uh, do Tau anytime soon uh, I thought it was very nice I thought it was very nice, but uh, no, I don't have time for Crute, unfortunately. Um, I'm not sure how well an updated Firstborn kit would sell, but I'd absolutely love it. Oh, I think it would sell so well, for sure. I think it would fly off the shelves. You know, do you know the um, the Tactical Squad still is one of the best selling kits? Like the the older Firstborn Squad still is one of the best selling kits that. Well, it would sell if it was proper scaled, <laughs> right? The first one had more flavor to chapter specific models. Uh, well, I hear this a lot. Uh, yes and no. The the first one had more chapter specific kits than are currently in the Primaris range. So from that perspective, the ranges probably did have more flavor. But I don't think you can say like the Black Templar Crusader kit has less flavor than the old Black Templar kits. It, it doesn't it has loads or the new dark angels kits have loads of flavor there just aren't very many chapter specific primaris kits that's the problem and the range is growing games workshop will make them that's how i see it anyway but yes of course there are some lovely firstborn chapter specific kits there are some great ones that games workshop made over the years um but i don't think the new ones are worse really there just aren't very many of them uh, for some reason, I have a Rhino Razorback with a small squad of Devastation and a squad of Tactical Marines. Yeah, I have random models. I don't know how I acquired as well. Just sort of the way. I think if you do this for long enough, you you don't remember. <laughs> you buy buy so much stuff, you don't remember buying it, and it's uh, scary sometimes. All right, I'm just trying to get the last um sort of pooling bits of null oil off this, and then we can, when that dries, which may not be for, for a while. <laughs> We can uh, do the dry brush on the top. Hopefully that will smooth out a lot of this um, kind of pooling. I miss the old Iron Hands upgrade kit. The new upgrade kits I never have legs and too many of those small bits. Oh, well, okay. So the, the kits that were made in around 2019 for Primaris for the chapters are not good. Um, I agree that chapter specific Primaris were very poor until about 2021 which is when the Black Templars got their models. And since then, they've been very good. So the first few years of Primaris was very, very slow for chapter specific stuff. So I'll concede that, that, that then it was not good to be a um, Primaris chapter specific fan. In the last couple of years, I think the direction is pretty good. Yeah, coming around to it, yeah. Helmeted and helmeted. Oh, I like both. I like both. They need upgrades to legs and chest pieces from the Primaris. 
didn't know the tactical squad still sold well. I really hope they release an updated one soon. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure the tactical squad would have been removed by now if it didn't sell well. There are still some firstborn kits that stick around and, and sales pretty much the entire reason they are still around. Right, the Rhino is another one. The Lander. People like these kits. Um, there's definitely a correlation between the kits that get taken away and them being bad kits. <laughs> like, Games Workshop are not taking away the like classics that are still selling out. Because um, they'd be silly to do that. They'd lose money if they did that. Okay. Um, let's just get this last bit of sort of pulled oil off. Nearly used a whole pot of non oil on this guy already. And most this bit you're not even going to see because it's going to be hidden under panels. Good as that. Almost like that it's a bit mottled and, and a bit um, patchy because the armor panels themselves will be very smooth. So it really adds a, a little bit of interest to the, to the model. I use no helmets on characters. Yeah, lots of people do that or on sergeants or whatever. How long does it usually take to make a video? Well, it varies a lot because some of my videos take forever and you know like the most recent painting one i did took i mean it took a few days to film because that's what i was painting it and to do the painting and it took a long time to edit it as well because editing uh those sort of videos with all those clips and even just the clips are so large even just sort of getting them on your computer is a bit of a task um but most of my sort of discussion videos where it's just a slideshow or i'm just scrolling through the website I tend to film those, um, you know, in one take, and they don't take that long. But it, the hard thing is not filming the video; it's having the idea and and having the thought process that I like, the discussion points that I want to hit. And I try not to I make of it. I, I only make a video if I think there's something worth talking about. So often I'll I'll go through a few weeks and I, and I, I want to make a video, but but I don't really know what I want to make it about. So I, and I've occasionally made videos which aren't. They're sort of non-videos, really, and I've sort of regretted it. So, and they never do that well. So, it's not it's not the making the video that's hard. It's 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 having the the, the inspiration that's the hard bit, and that comes and goes. Um, but I I think I mean yeah, there's there's uh, easy um, easy topics that you can always bank on, I guess, to discuss. But I don't like to repeat myself too much. Uh, in my videos. So it, a lot of Games Workshop content creators are waiting on new stuff, right? They're, they're waiting on the news. They 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 react to to what's uh, what's new, what's hot, what's interesting, and and that's uh, that, that that time schedule is dictated to them by whatever Games Workshop are doing or whatever's happening in the community. So um, often it's it's just the case of that. Really, can I get this to focus, please? I don't know. Right there we go. Let's go like that. Okay. Do you only paint 40K? Uh, broadly, I have <laughs> painted a little bit of fantasy. Uh, well, let's have a look. What's, here we go. I started painting some Sylvaneth. Um, but, uh, you know, I didn't get very far. I just wanted to see if I could whip something up really quickly. I thought maybe yes, I'd try and do the fastest army I could do and Silver Death, probably that. But no, I, I pretty much only do 40k and a bit of heresy. Um, AOS 4 is, is interesting. I, I like Skaven. But I, I've got to the point now where, where I basically don't really... I buy, I buy, I buy about one box set every six months now but I, I i haven't bought the only thing i bought in the last six months is um is the dark angels box set because i have too many models so <laughs> i don't think i'm going to be buying age of sigma just because uh i have so many models to, to paint and and I, I, I don't want more really <laughs> i want to start getting getting through them really rather than buying more um get that there. okay which character model do you want to uh, remade next? Pedro Cantor or Captain Tycho? Yeah, Tycho is interesting because Tycho is dead. So I don't know if he'll be remade because he died in the lore. Um, and it's, it's interesting he's still sticking around. Um, 
what character model do I want? I would like uh, Blood Angels ones. Seth would be nice. Um, Lamartes, Astarath, and maybe even the Terminator guy. What's his name? Uh, Carlian, the first company captain. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? A named Terminator Blood Angels captain. So yeah, I'd like to see some Blood Angels done. And it looks like we're getting some Blood Angels this year, which is good. Vulcan. <laughs> I don't have a problem with being small than his marines. Well, I think that's Vulcan Hestan you're thinking of, CMDR. Vulcan Hestan is uh, it's just a normal marine. He's just named after Vulcan, but the Primarch himself is not in 40k. There's no 40k model. Um, he's, the, he's a heresy model, I think, but not a 40k model. Do you have much interest in the law? And do you paint in non-marine models? Uh, do I paint non-marines? Not really. Pretty much everything I've painted recently has been a Space Marine. I have painted a Tyranid from Leviathan. There we go. Oh, look at this. Oh, and a Custodia, actually. There we go. Here's my non-Marine. Just the focus is... Ah! Oh, Tim. Disaster. There we go. I painted a Tyranid. Um, just the one. Come on, the focus. There we go. It's painted the Tyranid. Um, and I have painted this custodian. But beyond that, pretty much everything I paint is a space marine. Or a vehicle or, well, I guess this knight isn't a space marine, right? So I guess we sort of have some imperial, mod like general imperial models, there we go. Um, but no, pretty much just space marines or associated models. I do you think some of the new AS Warcry and Underworld sculpts are some of the best coming out from Games Workshop from a painting point of view? I agree. I agree. They um, they have a lot more creative freedom in AOS and Underworlds than I think Warcry, etc. Um, but... I think that's one of the reasons that they did Age of Sigma. They wanted a blank slate, right? They wanted to move to something where they could do that. And 40K is really hamstrung by its sort of history and it's both good and bad, right? Like if you look at the new stuff coming out, like it's essentially an upscaled version of something that they've already had for 15, 20 years, which is nice. It's, bit, it's what people want, but it doesn't, um, when it comes to actually making really interesting models, they're much more limited. Whereas AOS is just like blank slate, make what you want like, and that's some of those ranges are incredible. Uh, Sylvan Earth, some of the undead stuff, um, even some of some of the chaos stuff. They they really go to town on some of the elves are really amazing as well. Uh, it's only the Stormcast that I think are a bit, but even some of the Stormcast models are very very nice. So okay, we'll put the Tyranid away. There we go. I enjoyed painting that. Maybe one day I'll. Uh, do some more Tyranids. The Custodian I didn't enjoy that much, to be honest. I found him quite hard work. The, the This is no easier than a Space Marine, if anything. It took me longer. Um, yeah. The fact that I don't think Custodians is a fast army to paint from like per miniature perspective. There's just few, there's just not very many models in the army. Um, okay. Cabinet. Right. Catch up with some chat. Your painting is very impressive. Thank you. Very kind of you to say. Um, I had enough practice. <laughs> Spent many hours of my life doing this um, for many years. How do you paint the uh, tablet on your Templars? Yeah, it's a good question. With a lot of layers is how I paint the tablet. I do. Um, I do. I think I go Wraithbone, and then I do like Skeleton Horde, um, watered down, and you end up with some sort of like mucky looking tablet, a bit like this, right, with slightly sort of browny cream. And then, it, and then you know, broadly the recesses will have the darker bits, and then you sort of just like layer up from sort of the, I think maybe Skeleton Horde up to white, and then you can use, you can kind of glaze again with very thin 
uh, skeleton horde. That sort of that sort of idea. I mean, it, I, you, I'd have to show it to to show you exactly how I do it. But like, it's basically a lot of like layering, glazing, highlighting. Um, it's quite slow, to be honest. Uh, here, I'll show you what the tablet looks like now. I've talked about it. Uh, the best examples on my recent Cruel Blade model, actually. It's just a hand here. Here's a tablet that I've done. There you go. So it's it's broadly skeleton horde with and then um uh like another what's the color uh, this uh, a screaming skull there we go skeleton horde over wraith bone and screaming skull up to up to up to white uh, that's uh, how you do the tower up to white scar or something but there's a lot more to it now some glazing and and etc it does take a while <laughs> you want to get a tablet like that then you put a few hours aside I think because it's not quick unfortunately um the crew stuff has a fresh feel to them but like the cruel boys models yeah uh, I like the crew but uh, this is kind of why games workshop did votan I think as well they 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 basically had like a complete blank slate to uh to to go 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 with a you know a range and they sort of do it all at once and they do a good job and the crew was pretty much that it's nice it's almost a, an advantage to have not had models for 20 years because it means that the refresh is a real glow up and they add a lot more stuff right they've got more space to move whereas if you've been iterating over stuff constantly for you know every few years there's um there's almost less space to to be more creative and to to really um, you know, add new stuff. But yeah, the crew range is good. It's very good. All right. I'm getting a... Oh, I'm going to have to... So I don't know if you can see, but behind the head... It's a bit... Oh, you can't see, but anyway. Missed a bit, basically. Um, all right. We might wind down in a sec. Uh, which paint... Paint brand mainly consists of your collection. Uh, I have Citadel paints. Here we go. I'll show you. I have a lot of Citadel paints just sitting on my desk. Um, I'm not against any other paints, but that's just what I have. It's just easy to color match to stuff I've already done and kind of stuck with it now. Don't mind them at all. Uh, thank you for the tips on the tablet. Amazing paint jobs. Thank you very much, Michael. Glad you find it helpful. Hope you find it helpful. Okay. Now I wonder if this stream subscribers probably has. <laughs> oh no, we're holding steady. No. If you were around at the start of the stream, but it took us a couple of attempts to actually get working. A couple of failed streams. <laughs> the camera was just not. It wasn't um, using all its pixels, I think it's fair to say. And now it is, which is nice. All right, night, we're getting there, we're getting there. If you've never painted a night before, the classic way to do it is you glue the skeleton together and you leave all these armor panels and weapons and everything, you leave it all separate. And then what you do is you paint this, for example, and you can glue it on when it's painted. There you go. And you do that for the whole model. And it's certainly the easiest way to do it. And these can be you know, bright, vibrant colors. And a lot of people actually airbrush these as well. Um, I'll probably be hand brushing them. Uh, yeah, arms and whatnot. There's a lot of panels on these models. Here we go. So the, so the hand has, say, this sort of panel. But we we'll just keep it separate for now. And I actually think this is a very pleasant model to paint. I have this sort of idea of like, I'll just uh, so bash out the skeleton. You know, it's not going to be too much more work from here. I'll have to paint a few cables and, and you know, a few sort of spot details, but, but you know, you don't have to go too far really. And then it'll be a case of sort of just doing maybe a, a panel a day. Would that be a reasonable, you know, a few hours an evening, just get through one panel. Is that realistic? Panel a day? I reckon that's a nice little goal to have. And then eventually, maybe sort of two of these small ones or something a day, a couple of, couple of knees, there you go, that could be a day, 
I say a day, I mean, I work, I work a full-time job. So it would be a, you know, sort of evening or maybe an afternoon on the weekend or something like that. Um, and then, and then you'd get there. So I think, uh, I think if I, if I was going to go for a 2000 point army as quickly as possible, I think it would have to be knights. I think this is actually rapid, to be honest. This is what, a 500 point model? You paint four of them, you got an army? Yeah, I could do that. Anything else? Nah, I don't think so. Even like custodies. Nah, I couldn't do it because you've got to still paint 20, 30 infantry. That would take me way too long. Take me a year <laughs> to paint 20 or 30 infantry. Whereas, you know, guns to the head, I could probably do, do, do one of these in a few weeks. So, you know, a couple of months for, a, for an army. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's a little man in there as well. Do we paint him? Maybe. Kind of gets hidden in this uh, cockpit. There you go. So I think it's worth showing off because I think a lot, I think knights are quite an underrated kit. If you'd never never had a knight kit, this is kind of the experience. <laughs> it's like a uh, slightly different to normal Games Workshop sort of kits. It's very nice. It's very nice. Okay. I think with uh. I would like to start dry brushing this now, but um, I can't because it's still drying. This this is still wet, and it takes a very long time for this non-oil to dry in all the recesses. So I might have to leave it there. Um, yeah. Any last uh, any last questions before we leave it there for the evening? Anything else you'd like to know? This has been just a general uh, general Q and A stream in a way. <laughs> it's quite nice. I have gr I've grown a lot recently, so it's nice to to actually just speak to people, answer their questions. Um, and yeah, I'd like to stream more for sure. It's uh, it's not that easy streaming, especially if you don't want to show your face. <laughs> it's it's uh, it's hard to keep people and to sort of engage them. And maybe I need to work out my setup. You know, get some music. I need to get um you know, sort of memberships and donations going, that sort of thing. I, th I think you can join. Can, can can you donate and become a member? I think you can. I mean, no one has, but I, just, I don't, don't really care. But you get sort of the whole set going, you know. Well, maybe. maybe. There we go. But yeah, maybe I should uh, put some more time into this streaming setup. Um. The, the the problem is, and I said said this earlier. I I, I just can't really paint on stream. It's, it's too it's too demonic. I'm I'm so impressed by someone like War Hipster and and how how he paints on stream. He must have a a real sort of big old setup. Uh, don't know if they're on, but I don't think membership is. Okay, let's have a look. Can I turn on membership? I could do that Valrak thing where it's like, oh, can someone just become a member to check if it's working? <laughs> that is evil when he does that, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I like that. The creator. Uh, mem memberships. There we go. Um, I think the ships are on. Yeah. Yeah, you can become a member, I believe, if you would like to. Tell me if you try and really can't. Um, but I think they're on. Uh, I, you can join at the normal level, four ninety nine. Only have one level. There we go. Um, Donors are on. Holy scam rack. Yeah, he is a scam rack, but. Yeah, you can join as a you can join as a member. You go to uh, you click on the dollar, and then you can click on super sticker, super Stick, chat, membership, membership gifting, and I believe they're all working. So if you'd like to join, you can. Um, Bold rack, yeah, he shaved his head to me. That was funny. It was funny when he looked like the um, the towel. <laughs> I did actually enjoy that. 
I like a bit of Balrog. He actually comments on some of my videos sometimes, so he's a, he's a viewer. Oh, I don't think you can become a membership on um, on the phone. I think I think I think you generally have to be on a computer. Uh, swag D's. I think there's some weird thing about. Yeah, it's it's not all the apps like have it for some reason. But on my computer, I can see it. So I think you can do it. But... Maybe stream, yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry, I don't. Uh, I'm not fishing for memberships. It's a thing. Don't have any incentive for people to come become members. You have to uh you have to give some people, you know, perks, <laughs> new videos early or whatever, or uh special privileges in Discord or whatnot. Oh by the way, if you um if you're not in my Discord server, do join. Um I'll fire a link in the chat now. Uh there we go. Copy that. There you go. Join that if you'd like to, and you're not already in the Discord. I'm sure a lot of you are. It's uh, it's a good place. I like it there. I like it. All right, we'll call it there. I think we have a tiny bit of null oil left, so I'm gonna have to get more of that. The Marines are not gonna have any null oil for a bit. And this is where we're at. If you'd like to see the progress, um, yeah, metal on the legs is is looking quite nice. On the upper body needs some work, but we'll get there. All right, thank you guys. Have a good rest of your day. It's the evening here in the UK. Um, I assume it might be the afternoon if you're somewhere else. Do like the stream, do subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you soon. Bye.